Tucker, no managing. No, what even this Tucker got Bush Tucker, this living on Bush Tucker, Kwana and Sugar Bake and Lily Root. And then after that, we've been getting on just through the rain. But we were there, we were there, and we were there, and we and that thing even Puro. Creole is the first language of at least 15,000 people, and it is spoken by as many as 20,000 Aboriginal people across North Australia, from the Queensland border and right into the Kimberleys in Western Australia. Until recently, Creole was considered a non-language by many, but at last it is a Cinderella come of age, just being recognised because it is the language used in several highly successful bilingual education programs in government schools. And it is a language used in dozens of churches across the north of Australia. And above all, it is a language used in the camps. For thousands, it is their mother tongue. Before 1976, there were no books in Creole. Very few Creole speakers had developed the habit of reading English, though it had been taught in schools for a very long time. You may be really funny one. And you may think about one time, oh yeah. Today, however, there are many books in Creole and a large number of readers of the language. Probably the center of the language is the township of Roper River, or Nuka. It is an Aboriginal settlement on the edge of Arnhem Land in the Northern Territory. And it was to this town that Wycliffe translator John Sandifer came in 1973. Later he married and was joined by his new wife Joy in his home. Their work is, to put it simply, to change Creole from being a non-literary to a literary language. This does not mean, however, the goal is to teach everyone to read Creole. Old Charlie here will probably never learn to read very much. But with books written and translated into Creole, someone will be able to read the truth to him, and that's important. John and Joy spend a lot of time in the camps chatting, listening, and learning, and earning the trust and respect of their hosts. After language learning and analysis, which takes years to master completely, translation work begins. Here, Joy translates with her partner, Dorothy. I will declare openly that they belong to me. Are you savvy that meaning, Blood Ellen? We've been talk, talk, Blood Ellen? For you, any tell me now, one of my write them down. Long at that, Lord. Dorothy is then able to read the newly translated scriptures to her Sunday school class, even before it's published. Now that I read from Mark, the prodigal son. That's one way of testing the accuracy of translation. Of course, she also teaches from the growing quantity of published books. So now it is more than just a spoken tongue. As a literary language, Creole is a Cinderella come of age, and largely due to the work done by the Sandifers. Creole hymns and songs have also been translated by John and Joy with the help of local Christians. One in particular is Rodney Rivers of Western Australia. And of course, local pastors use the Creole scriptures very extensively. A translator, linguist's work encompasses far more than Bible translation. John is here recording the stories of the older folk. These are sent to Western Australia, then distributed on cassettes. 
and he gives consultant help to other linguists and teachers engaged by the church and government institutions. Here at Bamyili, he works with Kathy Gale, an education department the kids linguist. have been using the term, uh, the word mela, a lot more than they ever used to. And the Aboriginal teachers have picked this up and um, are really concerned about it because they want the kids here at Mel um, Bamyili to use the term mebola instead. Um, now, how do you see that as far as producing literature to yeah, go you, to Roper, etc. Well, you've got a bit of the same sort of contention at Roper where basically the older people say Malabat, like the old old people say Malabat. You can imagine how much travel this entails over some very rugged country. The Sandifers certainly appreciate their Toyota Land Cruiser. It's a very tough vehicle and doing a very tough job. And it's also good to know there's an SIO qualified mechanic at the centre in Darwin to maintain the vehicle. The Sandifers are always conscious of the large number of people dependent upon them for the work that they're doing, the pastors and Christians in the Creole Church, for example. <laughs> Then there are the bilingual education teachers and their classes in several schools right across northern Australia. And of course the Creole speaking Aboriginal people in towns, the outstations and the camps people who need to hear clearly that the good news has come to mankind. <laughs>